Most people say your 20s is a time to have fun and fool around, that you can afford to be dumb for a little while until you get married, buy a home, and start a family. However, if you make very smart financial decisions when you're young, you can set yourself up for a very bright future. Let's go. First, and arguably the most important, is further education. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean college. This could mean an apprenticeship, boot camps, lectures, watching videos on YouTube, even going to your local library and reading books, right? If you stop learning the second you graduate high school, you're really shooting yourself in the foot. After you graduate, there is so much more to learn that can greatly benefit you. You need to take that extra step so that you can stand out. It makes you more marketable and it gives you a leg up on the competition. So let's say that you apply for an entry level job. Every applicant has a bachelor's degree, a couple years of internships and went to a decent school. But what makes you stand out is you speak Spanish. So you can coordinate with offices in Central America or maybe you minored in psychology so you can help make the product more appealing from a psychological standpoint. In this world, it's who you know and what you know. And unfortunately, if you don't have one of those fancy last names, you have to work twice as hard. In most cases, you will have a car. When you were young, a cheap, reliable one is the best option. You can't afford the expensive monthly payments. You certainly can't afford the higher insurance, and you're fooling yourself if you think it will help you get ahead. You are a 20-something year old. People already have low expectations because you're just getting started or you have a few years under your belt. A cheap, reliable car is one less thing to worry about. And if it breaks down, you won't break the bank trying to fix it. The best assets are the ones that you rarely think about because they do their job in silence and they do it well. A good mattress, good shoes, good phone, good laptop, and a good car. In the US, you can stay on your parents' health insurance until you're 26. Now, if you have this opportunity, then it is the clear first choice but not everybody does. Health insurance can be expensive, usually at this age costing about three to $400 a month, but it's significantly less expensive than coming out of pocket for a gnarly injury when you don't have insurance. As you can see, most doctors will cost between $100 and $500 a visit. Now compare this to the average copay, meaning you have insurance, which is around $37. Even a visit to your specialist is cheaper, costing around $69. And if you were to go to the hospital, then you will need to be prepared to pay hundreds, if not thousands of dollars if you're uninsured. Health insurance is one of those things you rarely talk about, but when you need it, you're certainly glad that you have it. So don't take the risk. Even a basic plan is better than nothing. It's always better to travel when you're young. In most cases, you do not have any solid attachments or responsibilities. You aren't married. You have no kids, no home, and no pets. Equally, you are healthy and have the energy to go around and experience the world. I've had this happen to a couple friends of mine, where they travel to a place, fall in love with it, and move there permanently. So go travel, experience different cultures, try new hobbies, make memories, and who knows, you might find a new side of yourself, and you might meet your new future significant other. Now this one may take a while, but it's something you should be continuously working towards. Now at the moment, unfortunately, home prices are expensive, rates are high, and supply is low. But buying is always better. You build equity and also the value of your home increases as the years go on. And should you decide to sell it down the road, your home should be valued significantly more than what you paid for it. Compared to renting, where every single time you pay your rent every single month, you have really nothing to show for it long term. So choose what is best for you, if that's a condo, a co-op, or a home. You may even upgrade and switch between them over the course of your life. But regardless if it's worth $100,000 or $700,000, it's yours to do with as you like. And one that I am sure that many of you are expecting is some form of retirement account. Now, I have a preference for the Roth IRA, but there are many other different types of accounts to choose from. I've made many videos on this topic, which I can link in the description down below, but ultimately there's a very good chance that you'll be living past your retirement age, so you will need money to fund your lifestyle. Starting a retirement account as soon as possible will give you the best chance to get as much money as possible towards the decade or so of life that you should live past your retirement on average. So this could go towards trips, medicine, retirement facilities, and even end-of-life care. Do not burden your kids or grandkids with the cumbersome costs of retirement homes or hospice care. I have heard horror stories of decades of savings disappearing in a matter of years. So don't cripple the next generation and plan accordingly. Your 20s is a perfect time to get ahead of everybody else and set yourself up for a future of success and happiness. The sooner you start, the quicker you can learn from your mistakes and build off of your previous efforts. Put your head down and work while you have the energy to do so, so that in years from now, you can sit back and relax and look at the life that you built. And with that, I'm Evan, and thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, then click on the video here. Also, if you haven't, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos.